Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Helicopters play an irreplaceable role in the ranks of the militaries of the world. From carrying troops from and into battle to sling-loading cargo across the battlefield, the heavy lift helicopter has become indispensable. But these aerial giants must be maintained to ensure safety and extend their service lives for as long as possible. Helicopters like the CH-53 Sea Stallion entered service during the Vietnam War. It would take five years before the upgraded CH-53D would be introduced in 1967. By 1971, the U.S. Marine Corps upgraded to the CH-53E Super Stallion. With an additional engine and rotor blade, Super Stallion was the longest serving version with minor upgrades until the CH-53K King Stallion was introduced in 2023. The Marines referred to the King Stallion as the Kilo. The Kilo feels great. Uh, compared to the Echo, uh, it does feel different. Um, it's much, uh, it's very intuitive. Uh, you do have to work less to fly it. Uh, it's a lot more systems intensive, but uh, the systems are very easy to use and, and they're very quick to get used to. In order to deploy the CH-53K King Stallion to where its abilities are required, it needs to fit into U.S. Air Force transport aircraft, such as the C-17 Globemaster III. When the CH-53K was developed, Sikorsky, its designer, considered that the King Stallion would have to be air transportable. Therefore, it was built for a tight fit inside the C-17. Flight engineers still have to remove the rotor from the helicopter and fold its tail before it will fit. At 33,000 pounds, the King Stallion is too heavy to load only manually. Therefore, the loadmaster of the C-17 employs the aircraft's cargo winch. With the cargo winch, the helicopter can be pulled slowly into the cargo area of the C-17 Globemaster III. So the CH-53K, it obviously filled the entire cargo compartment, uh, so it provided a good training opportunity for our loadmasters. Uh, so they were able to load very large cargo and also coordinate with the Marine Corps to make sure they were able to safely and quickly load the cargo into the airframe. Um, and then also once we got to Berlin, making sure they coordinated with the user on the ground there. So then that way they were able to safely and offload the cargo there as well. In order to prevent a nose-up hovering attitude, one of the features brought over from the Super Stallion is the slanted tail rotor. Due to its downward angle, the tail rotor provides some lift, and that cancels the nose-up hover. Combined with its additional improved ground effect performance due to its flat fuselage, the powerful seven-blade rotor powered by three General Electric T408 turbofan engines helps to give it almost three times the lift capacity of the Super Stallion. <music> Via 
vibration in the rotors is reduced thanks to its composite design. Less vibration means less chance of helicopter parts becoming inoperable. The U.S. Marine Corps provides all of its aircraft with maintenance based on maintenance cycles. Hey, Frizina, you know you don't need to take that top row off just enough so they can pull it down and look in, right? Routine maintenance is carried out after and before every flight. Routine maintenance is the less invasive kind. It's executed by the Aviation Maintenance Marines. During pre-flight checks, they are responsible for performing exterior checks where the fuselage is inspected for leaks and damage to loose panels. Once pre-flights are complete, the crew of the CH-53K takes the aircraft on its required mission. The King Stallion can transport various types of cargo internally, as well as being able to carry external loads. Internally, it's able to airlift 30 passengers or troops, 24 casualty litters, 35,000 pounds of cargo or variations of these. The kilo is used by the U.S. Marine Corps to perform sling load missions whenever they require large loads to be moved around the battlefield. It's rated to lift 36,000 pounds, but between its forward and rear cargo hooks, it's rated for 27,000 pounds. Once the load to be airlifted is secured, the pilot of the King Stallion is notified, and they fly in for the hookup. Helicopter support teams, or HSTs, are utilized by the Marines to prepare and control sling loads from the ground. One of the significant advantages of the Kilo above the Echo is that it can lift heavy loads at high and dry altitudes. It lifts loads without a significant decrease in the amount of power available. When an MH-60T Jayhawk of the United States Coast Guard crashed, CH-53Ks were called in to help. Despite the high and dry altitude of 12,000 feet, the Kilo is more than capable of lifting the Jayhawk. These multi-mission Coast Guard helicopters weigh about 15,000 pounds empty. In general, Marines give positive feedback after their first experience flying in the CH-53K. Except for its excellent performance, it's much easier to fly, making the passengers feel like they're in good hands. Its crew consists of a pilot, a co-pilot, and a combination of crew chief and door gunners. Additional crew can be included, depending on the mission. The crew in the crew cabin also assist the pilots by providing extra eyes for any possible obstructions during landings and takeoffs. CH-47 Chinooks are to the United States Army 
what the CH-53 is to the United States Marine Corps. These tandem rotor aircraft were delivered to the U.S. Army in the same year as the Marines received the CH-53. They are also used for heavy lift operations. The major difference between Chinooks and most other helicopters is their unique tandem rotor design. Which provides them with more inherent stability. One of the major army bases where Chinooks operate is Camp Humphrey's Army Garrison in South Korea. Desiderio Army Airfield, the busiest U.S. Army airfield in Asia, is located at Camp Humphreys and has an 8,124-foot runway. It's also home to a state-of-the-art CH-47F Chinook simulator. saving the U.S. taxpayer more than $11,000 per hour and providing high-quality training to Chinook crews. Except for training, the Chinook requires high standards of maintenance. Phased maintenance for the CH-47 Chinook is a systematic approach to preventative and corrective maintenance. Its purpose is to keep the aircraft in good working order and to prevent mechanical failures. The specifics of phased maintenance can vary depending on the aircraft model and the policies of the operating service. Phased maintenance is typically performed in accordance with flight hours. A phase maintenance inspection for the CH-47 may occur every 200 flight hours. Though this can vary, to keep a record of the aircraft's maintenance history, all maintenance actions are documented. This can help identify recurring issues, track component lifespan, and ensure all necessary maintenance is completed. Chinooks are able to control the pitch of each of its main rotors separately. This enables the helicopter to land with its rear wheels first. It's particularly useful during pinnacle landings. Pinnacle landings are where the rear wheels touch down on a hill or pinnacle and the front wheels remain airborne until loading or unloading has been completed. Due to the tandem rotor design, the Chinook is also one of the most stable helicopters while hovering. Making it ideal for cargo slinging, fast roping, and similar missions. Due to its inherent stability, it's also helpful for search and rescue or extraction missions. In icy conditions, skids can be added to the CH-47 landing gear to prevent sinking into deep snow. It can then land on ice and snow and do extractions. Pararescue jumpers, or PJs, 
are responsible for rescuing downed pilots and air crew, mostly from hostile environments. Chinooks are able to extract soldiers, PJs, special forces, and other personnel of importance. They can later be transferred to another aircraft, such as an HC-130J Combat King II. Helicopter warfare is not just about offense, but the support these machines provide. Helicopters such as the CH-53K King Stallion and CH-47F Chinook provide support that is indispensable to a modern conventional military force. They can change the focus of the primary effort during operations quicker than the enemy and retain the initiative. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.